Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Andrew. Bill is off today, so Andrew is filling in. So today, Andrew, what we're gonna be talking about is, is Florida becoming the new natural disaster capital of the United States, or has it always been? So we're gonna go over a list, you know, especially if you're moving here, we're gonna go over a list of, of things that you really have to consider when moving to Florida. And one of them is natural disasters. And everybody keeps talking about hurricanes, hurricane, hurricanes. And on this list, we're going to talk about hurricanes too, but there's like nine other things you really have to think about. So then in today's the top 10 natural disasters of Florida. <laughs> video. All right, yeah, today's the top 10 natural disasters <laughs> of Florida. So that's what we're talking about. In the meantime, do me a favor. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It's really important. It's greatly appreciated. And it really helps out the channel and motivates us. So, Bill. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Bill. Go keep going from there. Andrew. Okay, everybody goes, he goes by Andrew, but I don't know why he wants me to call him Andrew. But All right, let's talk about hurricanes, okay? We got hit by Helene and Milton. And wasn't there one just before Helene, like a something that was down further? I don't know. It was just like something. each hurricane is different. Uh, there was something last year that got devastated, and I just can't think of the name right now. Yeah. Because, you know, as time there's passes, too many of them. there's too many of them. Yeah. They, they even had one that they called back in the day, the no-name one, didn't they? Yeah. That, and that one was devastating. They said that was worse than all the hurricanes. But now, Hurricane Milton, because Milton was more of a storm surge kind of thing. Yeah. And it was more devastating. And wind. Yeah. Crazy wind. The, that, that was, Helene was more windy than Milton. Was it? Yeah. I thought Milton was crazy wind. Holy cow. So if Helene but, was worse, wow. But the first one on the list... Okay, let's. There's no order or anything, but I think hurricanes probably is number one on the list. It probably is because w when you think of a hurricane coming off, say Africa, yeah, you're like, all right, it's gonna hit Florida. Yeah, <laughs> it's I know. Just, it's the butterfly effect. It's insane, like you know, <laughs> and how far it travels and it gets bigger. And when it hits us and it hits the warm water of the Gulf, they just explode. Oh yeah, especially now because we had a really warm Gulf temperature, and so they got supercharged this year. Yeah. So, I mean, hopefully we're not going to see this kind. They, like, they keep saying, oh, this is the 100-year storm, but they say that every year. Like, this is the 100-year rainfall. This is the 100-year flooding. This is the 100-year. I'm sick of hearing the 100-year thing because it feels like it's every other year. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but let's talk about the next one. Flooding. Flooding. And I'm not talking about from a hurricane. I'm talking about just rainfall. Oh, for, yeah. We could, you could get under a rainstorm here. And it can rain 10, 14 inches. There, there, was a, there, was a, there was a town in Sarasota that, you know, basically got flooded. Not because of storm surge, you know. It was just from rain. Like, and they weren't even in a flood zone. They were flood zone X. It was all over the news. And they had, I don't know if it was because of the developments in the area, because... Was there a, let me ask you this, because I don't know. You know Sarasota. I don't. Do they have a sewer system there? For like yeah, when it yeah, rains, well, they, that they, it actually, like the way they, back well, on the East like, Coast, it's not you know, like New York. Sewer, it's not like sewer systems like New York. It's more like retention ponds that okay. hold water. So this neighborhood basically in Sarasota never got flooded before. Been around for over 20 years. Never got flooded. And now we had like 12 inches of rain within a 24-hour period. I know the place you're talking about. I saw it all over the news. It got devastating. I'm talking oh, about yeah. three, three feet, feet of water. Yep, yep. Three feet of water in people's houses. Yeah. It destroyed them. And it was sold as not being flood and anything like that. Right. And now, you know, I go to subdivisions because I do a lot of new constructions. And here, here's one of the biggest things. Stay till the end. I want to tell you what, what's one of the most important things if you're moving to Florida is to do. The most important thing, in my opinion, what to do when you're moving to Florida or where to live. But these subdivisions, a lot of them got flooded. The brand new construction. Yeah. Yes. Okay. People are going to say, well, Army Corps engineers sometimes gets involved. You know, the engineers, they do floodplains. They figure out how much pavement and they figure out how much retention ponds they need and drainage. And I hear this stuff all the time. Yeah, but nobody can prepare for 14 inches of rain in two hours. You know, for storm hang a, a rainstorm hangs right, over. and they're like, "Oh, it's the hundred year storm." But yeah, but it happens gotta, once a month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, one of the big reasons I won't move into a brand new subdivision or brand new construction—it has no history. Oh yeah, you don't know what's going on around there. Yeah, 
like this neighborhood that we're in now, yeah, we're on my property. Um, but this has I, probably been here for what, 50 years? Well, yeah, I mean. I mean, the houses have changed, but there's always yeah, been the, people living here. Yeah, for 50 years. Yeah. And I know the storms that it, yeah. it's had. Yep. And I know over here, the houses have to be in stilts or otherwise they're going to get a flood. Or at least I know that. But some of these new construction sites, there's no history. I mean, they can build brand new houses and then next year they could be freaking flooded. And I think sometimes because builders, you know, one of their biggest costs is land because it's not like they're building one, two, three houses. They'll build a thousand houses. I know. Or yeah. 2,000 yeah. houses. Yeah. So the... You know, here where we are, it's not like you could find property that could, you know, that could fill two, you know, hold 2,000 houses. So they go where the land's cheap. Yeah. They go out. And they get crazy deals where they don't have to pay impact fees. Well, know, yeah, I don't know what. Or, or at least uh, half half of what you, like you might pay 30000 to put a house up here. But if a developer bought all of this, he might only have to pay 12000 per house. Yeah, I don't know exactly the deals they do, but my, my point is that. You know, say you have you're in a subdivision just a little further down, and they build another subdivision next to you for two thousand homes, and they pave everything over, and they did retention ponds. Okay, if they did a good job, they won't get flooded. But maybe all that water that usually is there, maybe will flood your subdivision. Oh yeah, it'll just cross the street. They're building something near me. Um, I'm not exactly sure where it is. It's supposed to be by by some Boy Scout land. Um, and they're supposed to be put be putting in the world's largest man-made pond. Really? Yeah. Like you're going to be able to literally not just jet ski, like take your speedboat on it and everything. It's supposed to be like in Spring Hill, somewhere around by me there. Yeah. I mean, we we have the springs right in Hudson, right up here. You're talking about that? I don't know what exactly what it is. I saw it on the news not too long ago. I caught like the tail end of it because I caught that they were building the world's largest. Well, yeah, because lake. He, here's the here's I was the, like, that's insane. Here's the problem with disasters in Florida. It's not really Florida per se, the disasters. The disasters are dramatic here because we used to have, say, we had 50 people in an area. Now everybody moved to Florida. And that is 500 on now the same block. Now 500 people in the same space. Yeah. So, yeah, so if a storm happens, instead of affecting 50 people, it's affecting 500 people. Yeah, and they build these houses, these new ones, these new developments. Oh, it's so stupid. Six to eight feet apart from each other? It's so stupid. Literally, I could touch both houses at the same time. And they stagger the windows on the houses so you can't see inside the next person's house. But if you're buying new construction, go upstairs and go into the bedroom and look out the window, you're going to see a wall. But then look at an angle and you'll see inside their bedroom. And it's crazy. It is. I mean, I'm lucky where I'm on a half acre of land, my house. And my closest neighbor to me is, I think he's 28 feet between my corner of my house and the corner of his house. Yeah, but like, on like an angle. this like this property here, you know, when I build, what I have a water around me. So what am I going to see? I have a neighbor, but then I got. Yeah, yeah, but you you're gonna you're gonna have some nice space between you, which yeah, I have a nice space. And yeah. my and my house, you know, my main house where I live in, I, I have privacy everywhere. Yeah, you know, in the back, it's all. It's a giant lake. Yeah, it's a giant <laughs> lake. So I, I, I have alligators looking at me. All right, let's talk about the next one. That's common in Florida that people don't really talk about. It. It's storm surges. Yeah. So it's not just from hurricanes, but we have storm surges that just, just need the wind to pick up. Yeah, the wind to pick up. That's it. And there's certain areas that are like, oh, why it's, you know, we're at six feet above elevation now. Now they're saying with the full moon and the wind and. Yeah, just, you don't you don't even have to get hit by, say, the hurricane. No. You can just get the wind from the hurricane and that brings a storm surge. If you're in. on the back end, yeah. like we got lucky with. Um, Helene, because we were on the clean side, I mean, the less destructive side when it came to storm surge yeah. of Helene. If Helene moved, it hit south of Tampa Bay. And I'll tell you my theory why I think it moved, hit south of Tampa Bay. It's kind of funny. But if it, say, it hit north of Tampa Bay and we got the, the, the top surge, end, yeah. yeah, the surge side, we would have been destroyed, yeah. probably worse than Milton. Yeah. And Milton, they thought, was going to hit head on in Tampa. So there's this thing, there's this place called Safety Harbor, and there's Indian domes there, and, you know, where they're buried and stuff. You guys should look it up. It's through Safety Harbor Indians. Google it. 
And they're saying that they did this thing to protect Tampa Bay from hurricanes. The Indians did like a ritual or something? Yeah, I'm telling I believe you, it. I believe there's a whole story. It. I believe it. And, you know, and I took it like folklore, whatever, and everything. But since I've been here, every time they say something's going to hit directly to Tampa Bay, it either heads south or north. Yeah. Okay. So you guys really, really need to just check Google that and, and read that story. It's a really interesting story. Here's, an, here's another one that people don't really talk about a lot is tornadoes. And in during Milton, there was like, I think, 127 like uh, storm cell, tornado storm cells. But then there was that one that hit. And what's the fort? That's there's a military base Fort something fort. I forget what it's called, where some people died. I don't know. Yeah, it was on the news. A couple of people died like it literally destroyed like three or four blocks. The tornado it, it touched and it touched at night which is because that's when the hurricane was coming through. So you don't see anything. It's almost like living the tornadoes in- tornadoes like, for all the time. Yeah. I get, I have ADT alarm system and you know, it, it, and it just buzzes and says, you know, gives you a warning it's even at three o'clock in the morning. It's always three o'clock in the morning. I don't know why. Tornado warning, tornado warning, tornado warning. It's like living in Kansas. Yeah. You know, and, and another thing with, with Florida too is we have wildfires here. People don't think we have wildfires here, but we have wildfires here. Yeah, we do. And they're they're not controlled wildfires. Like it's a bolt of lightning did it. You know what I mean? And Well, yeah. So basically, let's combine two because one of them is wildfires. The other one is lightning. We're called the lightning capital. I think there's a place in South America, Brazil, someplace that has more lightning strikes, but we're like really close to it. I mean, it's gorgeous when when a storm is coming in. You see all the sky, all the clouds lighting up. You can't believe how much lightning is. Here. My house got my house got hit by lightning. Okay, so did and, mine. But lightning blew a hole in my roof. It went through the shingles. Okay, it mm -hmm. went through the shingles. It hit the OSB, blew a hole in the OSB. Okay, because I found out about. It. Left the shingles alone. So it was a soft spot. So if you walked on my roof and you got to a certain spot, you'd probably fall through it. So when I got a new roof put on last year, they're like, hey, you know, you have a hole in it, like singe marks all around. And I remember that day you got hit. And I'm like, really? And I'm a home inspector. You think that? <laughs> you you go on the roof, though. You, you, never, you never inspect your own home. <laughs> <laughs> you never inspect your own home. I don't know why. But it's like, OK, it's like a mechanic. You never work on your own car. But um, but yeah, lightning and wildfires, because Lightning hits the tree. We had wildfires just here in Hudson. Yeah, it's it's you can smell them, and I mean, and it is we get a a good wind down here every day, good breeze. Like it's pretty nice out now. It's hot, but it's nice with a breeze, and you can smell the fires from. And it's all summer long, even yeah. into the winter. So we're gonna the next smell one it right now. Yeah, the next one we're gonna talk about is, and people can say that's not a natural disaster, but it kind of is in a way. Sinkholes. So let me Florida's got a lot of them. Let me explain why I consider it a natural disaster because natural springs underground, water running underground, just because you don't see it, there could be a stream under the ground and everything, and it erodes the water and and the ground collapses. Yep. I call that natural disaster. Well, the other problem is not just from the the you know the the aqua, the underground springs. When these developers come in and they rip all these oak trees out and all these pine trees out, and there was the roots of all these trees yeah, holding they, they, the ground they, together. Yeah, they, but what they're also they're doing is, and, and I hate when builders do this. So say they're clearing out, clearing out a spot, okay? And they take all the trees and all the stumps, okay? Instead of hauling them away and doing something, they dig a big hole and they bury them. They, they and create they a put, rot pile. Yeah. And then over time, what's gonna happen? That all those roots and those stumps are gonna deteriorate and yep. it's gonna create a sinkhole. And that's and it's a people think like oh it's only a couple feet deep no it's like some 80 are, feet deep and it's like you know 120 feet wide yeah some of them are huge uh, yeah you know, because it, the, the walls be able, just keep going yeah you know, yeah keep eroding out yeah. so yeah and then so sinkholes <laughs> a I lot can, there's a lot there's been major deaths like people's houses falling into sinkholes in Florida. Yeah, and I, I don't want you guys thinking I'm trying to be negative about Florida. I love Florida, and it's the best state for me, but... It's things people wouldn't think of if they lived in Long Island or Jersey or Pennsylvania or Texas, for argument's sake. Right, absolutely. You know, you wouldn't <laughs> think of these things at all. And you would come in from those states, 
because you're like, oh, say you're from New York or New Jersey, tri-state area. You might move to Florida just because you want warmer weather. But you don't realize with the warmer weather comes 10 other things. You know, it's it's crazy. It's, right. So, okay, let's let's talk about heat waves. Now, okay, everybody's going to say, oh, yeah, you're in Florida. Florida just feels hotter than it usually is. Put it this way. We are almost in November, okay? And it's like 89 degrees? 86 with 64% humidity right now at... I, I, we actually had a move from the dock because the sun was too much and, and find a shady area yeah. to film this. Yeah, it was so hot sitting over there. I mean, people die over heat waves. Like when when I'm doing inspections, I literally, especially June, July and August and September, I literally have to stop every 10, 15 minutes, you know, drink, you know, Gatorade or whatever. When I'm up in the attic, I'm talking about 120, 130 degrees. I have a fan that I use. And you're only up egg. there for like a minute, if that. Yeah, but some of these yeah. guys, you know, some of these guys that do air conditioning they're up there, they're, up there. they're up there putting an air handler in. Yep. Popping salt pills. It is brutal. And this summer was, um, this way, this is my first real summer here, you know, staying the whole summer in Florida. And according to everyone I've talked to, this was probably one of the worst summers that they've had as far as the heat and the humidity, like it was hot. It was crazy hot. So, you know, like we we have, you know, here's another one. We have droughts here in Florida too, okay? Yeah. For a while, for like two years, it never rained. It was just drought. They put restrictions and that's natural disaster. They put restrictions. You think, oh, Florida, we got plenty of water, drinking water, we got plenty of everything. Well, it's think not. about this. The, the hurricane was what, three weeks ago? Yeah. It hasn't rained here in three weeks. And it normally, like, you used to always get the, you could tell your time by it would rain every day in Florida at 4 o'clock. Well, it, it it, that's what I was saying. It used to be normal that, you know, during the summer months, during the rainy season, at 3 o'clock it would start raining. By 3.30 it, it would stop raining, but it was raining sideways. And then you could actually see the steam coming off the streets. Yeah, it doesn't do that anymore. For a few years it didn't do that. And then it started raining a lot. But... Certain parts of Florida, we have droughts and we get restrictions on water. Yeah, watering your lawns. Cause yeah. And, and a lot of people water their lawn through uh, pumps, meaning from the wells underneath. Yeah. And but that's it, even, that's the big restriction because you could drain those in no time. Yeah, they're, they're private wells, but it's just, you know, one of those things is, too, is droughts here. Here's another thing. Coastal erosion. Okay. Coastal erosion basically is happening more and more in Florida. So like even places like Miami and stuff, they say they're going to be underwater soon because just the coast is disappearing. Either water is rising and it's disappearing or just sand, like Clearwater Beach. Do you remember when you used to go to Clearwater Beach and you had to walk forever to get to the water and then just after a couple of storms, it's like right there. It's like the beach is gone, just erosion. They have to bring in sand well, and rebuild they, it. Well, they're not dredging. That's the other thing, too. Like, they should have been, you know, pull, pulling the sand that went out, pulling it back in, but they, 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 they've they stopped all of this. So, so basically, you know, that's like the top 10, you know, natural disasters in Florida. But here's the thing. If you're moving to Florida, and what I said at the beginning of this video, if I was moving to Florida now, the most important thing will be elevation. It is the most important thing. So basically... When you're picking a place to live, okay, you want to find out where, when was the highest floodplain of that area, whether it was from rain, hurricanes, I don't care, just elevation. And then you want to build or buy a place that's maybe five or six or even 10 feet higher than that. What's the elevation of your property here? This over here is eight feet above sea level. Sea level. See, my house but, in Spring Hill is 26. But eight feet sounds like, okay, you got eight feet, but that's really not much. No, it's not. It's something. I have 26 by me, um, I'm, but I'm, you're on the water. I'm like three miles well, off Well, the water. put it this way. The, my main house that I live in, you know, it's everybody. I have water behind me in a, in a stream and everything. And during the heavy rains that we had, we had like 13 inches of rain, I think. It was pouring, and we have like a little dam there, you know, and it was just going over the dam. It was vicious, and, you know, my wife's like, oh, my God, we're going to flood. We're going to flood. But I'm 11 feet 
just 11 feet higher than a neighborhood that's across the street, they get flooded before me, and the water's coming from behind my house. You have footage of that. To I show. have footage of that, yeah. And it's only, the only difference is 11 feet. So elevation is the most important thing to think about, in my opinion, when moving to Florida and picking a location to live. Anyways, that's today's video. Do me a favor, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Watch this video over here. I picked it out just for you. And give it a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you next one. Thank you, and have a great day.